Hello and welcome to my video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Vicious Ant Kraken uh, clone. And this particular model, I just got it in today and uh, I just wanted to go through it. And uh, there, There's plenty of videos on YouTube as far as how to build a... Um, build build these up using uh, stainless steel wick and and using cotton wicks and I just wanted to do something experimental today to see how it was going to work and uh, without further ado we'll get started just so you know this um, particular Addy came with uh, some silica wick and it also came uh, with some stainless steel mesh and traditionally these type of um, this is basically a Genesis type atomizer and, and most people use a stainless steel wick and they'll use usually around 28 uh, uh, 28 gauge canthal to, to make their micro coils with uh, I don't have the correct batteries in my uh, mechanical mod to, to build sub like a sub ohm build right now so I'm um, I'm basically going to take a little bit of a different route and instead of building du dual sub ohm coils I'm just going to build one single coil that will put me um, basically somewhere between um, one and one and a half ohms and instead of using the, the stainless or the silica what I have what I have here is uh, some echo wool and I got this off of eBay. I can't remember the the person I bought it off of's name, but uh, this particular Echo Wool has a cotton core, so I figured it would it it would be pretty neat to try and check this out and see how it works here on the Kraken. Okay, to tell you a little bit about the Kraken, the uh, drip tip it has a 510 type. Uh, drip tip that'll uh, pull off the top and uh, if you're able to look here it has an air hole here and you turn it over and there's another one on the opposite side now there's a, a probably about a two or three millimeter ring on the top and you're able to to turn this even though it's not knurled if you got e-juice on it, it'll probably be slick and it, it would be hard to turn, but um, I'm going to try and get this to where you can see that hole. But you can turn it and, and adjust your airflow with this. It, it just opened up. And um, you can choose to have both holes open or to where only one of them will be open, and, and that's pretty cool. Now... I've been wanting one of these for a while and I, I did quite a few uh, searches on YouTube and I watched um, quite a few videos over the last month or so uh, on the Kraken and one thing that I noticed that everybody was having problems with it is uh, basically this piece here is a cover piece over the tank and, and when you pull this top cover off people had stated that they had pulled their uh, tank out at the same time and just had e-liquid going everywhere and I thought to myself well you know the solution to that would be is if the manufacturers threaded this bottom part of the uh, the top cover that way you're not having to, to pull it off and there would be less of a chance to, uh, you know, pull your tank up and lose all your juice if, if they were to do that. So I got this one in today, like I said, and, and uh, you know, I spent probably about two or three minutes trying to, you know, pull that cap off. And I mean, it was just going nowhere. So I said, well, you know, maybe the O-rings are in there a little tight. So I started twisting a little bit, and when I did, I noticed... Ha <laughs> ha! Hey man, they they thought of my idea as well, and they uh, threaded the bottom of this thing. So it excellent, excellent idea, and I mean, really, really cool. 
So now, you know, it's not a slide on, slide off type deal to where you're going to, you know, accidentally pull this, this glass tank up and, and lose everything that's inside of it. Um, I'll go ahead and set that there and set that here. Okay. If you um, are looking here at the crack in this, this thing is designed to have uh you know two stainless meshes uh stainless excuse me stainless steel mesh uh wicks going down into your tank they, they go down in the holes and that's where they collect the e-liquid uh, and like i said there's there's tons of videos on on youtube as far as uh people building cotton cotton wicks and everything else so i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna take a, a different approach and and uh, try and do it with this uh, echo wool with the cotton core now usually you would set this thing up to where you have a coil on one side uh, with a wick another wick and another coil here on on the opposite side and then your third hole would act as your um, your charging port or filling port uh, for your tank now this particular one that was shipped to me was missing the uh, the little plug that that um, you know I would put into the the fill port to keep my e-liquid from leaking out when I lay my tank to the side so I'm gonna have to look around and get a plug and for the next I don't know, day or so till I find something to use as a plug. I'm just going to have to make sure it doesn't ever uh, tilt over to the side or I'll definitely leak juice out of there. But no big deal. What I'm going to do, since I'm only going to be building a single coil on this, I'm going to use these two holes that are next to each other and I'm, I'm going to take this uh, echo wool and I'm going to basically loop it up and back down into the tank. So I'll have two wicks going down but I'll, I'll just have a single coil and where I build my coil I'm gonna cut a little bit smaller piece of echo wool so I'll have a double layer where the coil is and I'll show all that here in a minute as I'm as I start building this uh, but I just wanted to give you a, an overall idea of what um, I was doing now um, one thing a lot of these addies I've been getting in have been having problems with the insulator. So I just want to check this thing and make sure that it's not internally uh, grounded. And one way I can do that is just go to the hot post here in the middle and go down. And of course this one's good. If it was bad we would hear, hear that noise there. So we're this one's good, no internal grounds or anything like that. So um, I'll move right along and we'll start building this coil. So I've got my uh, echo wool here, and what I want to do is I I want to just take it, lay it here on top, and just figure out a decent sized piece right there. And then I'll come in and I'll cut it. Okay. Now, once I get that piece, what I'm going to do is, and I've never built this coil or this type of coil before. I've built variations of it, but uh, this is my first Genesis type uh, atomizer. So I'm, I'm just experimenting, you know, that's how you come up with some really good ideas sometimes so I'm going to take my trusty uh, pin here uh, this was from a uh, um, you know, I can't even think of the word right now but a uh, boutonniere uh, you know that you'd pin a flower to yourself or whatever and I'm just going to measure my wick up against that and basically just cut it I'm 
and then I'm going to thread this onto my needle. And if you hear little feet running on the floor, it's my chihuahua. So, so I'm just going to sort of put that needle through that wick, just like that. Okay. All right. Now, like I said, I don't, I don't have the uh, batteries that allow me to uh, run a sub ohm coil or anything like that. So. Um, I'm using 32 gauge Canthal uh, for this particular build and just so you can have an idea of what I'm going to do I'm, I've got my um, echo oil here on, on my pin and I just want to sort of center it like that on this wick here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up okay and I'm going to do about a four turn wrapped coil on this. Okay, give me a little bit of slack down there just in case. Alright, so we got one. Oops. And I'm, I'm, since I got that pin in there, I'm twisting it pretty tight because it's not going to compress it too much with that pin being in there. Two, three, four. Okay. Actually, on this one, I think I'm going to go. Nah, I was going to go one more turn, but I'll. I don't think I will. We'll just see how this plays out. If it does, if I don't like the way it vapes, I can always go back and build another one. But anyway, now I'm going to take my tweezers get in there and and uh, sort of make sure my coils are evenly spaced the way I want them you know where they're not touching and stuff like that you want it to be able to heat up even evenly and uh, that's just part of the the process okay What I'm doing right now, I had a, I didn't quite have the coil in the center of this top piece, so I just grabbed the pin and the the wick and sort of pulled it out a little bit. Hopefully, you can see what I was doing. Okay, so that looks that looks pretty good, right? Okay. So now, like I said, this is the first time I've built a coil on one of these, so. I know that that um, one of these screws here, the the ones down on the the deck part or your ground, and your center one do, is your uh, positive. And basically, what I have to accomplish right now is I have to get that wick down into each of those holes and then I have to attach my um, ground down here in my my hot up here I think what I'm gonna try and do is and I might be kicking myself in the butt but I think what I'm gonna try and do is uh, put the wick down first and uh, like I said, this is the first time, so it's going to be trial and error. Now, one thing we do need to do is just put a drop of e-liquid, e-juice, whatever you want to call it, on the tip of this echo wool. And what it's going to allow us to do is just get it through the holes. Okay. I would say put a little spit on it, but you know, you really don't want to contaminate your tank with germs, even if it is yours, you know what I mean? Don't want no bacteria in there. Try and keep everything as clean as possible. Okay. So I'm going to 
Now I'm way up there. I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention to the viewfinder on my camera. Apologize. Okay, we got the first one in, and now I'm going to pull that through a little bit. Okay. Let me just straighten this back out. Okay, now we'll thread this other one through. And I'm going to put a little bit more e liquid on that, sort of dried up a little bit. Alright. Okay, what's happening is that I think that cotton is swelling up a little bit, so let me give it a slight twist. See if I can't coax it in there. No. What I'm going to have to do is just clip a little piece of that off. It just ended up getting too frayed. No big deal. Alright. Put a, more, a little more e-liquid on it. Okay. I think this coil is kicking my butt here. The other one went in pretty doggone easy. I don't know why this this side isn't wanting to to work, but hey. We'll get it in there. Right. Yeah, that's not working. Okay, as you can see, I was pulling the cotton core, but the rest of it wasn't wanting to, the echo wool part wasn't wanting to go through. I'm going to put a little more e-liquid. I'll put a little more than I did last time, and hopefully that'll keep it all together. All right. There we go, that got it. See, persistence does pay off. Alright, so now, as you can see, let me, let me, uh, back this thing up a little bit so you can see. So I've got both my, my coils, or not coils, but my wicks going down those two holes now. And it looks like this piece needs to come up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take my, very carefully pull my pin out of there and then I'm going to push this piece there we go perfect all right so I'm going to pull it down for right now and I am going to make this my ground and I'm going to on this small Canthal. I like uh, I like doing complete loops around the screws. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna pull up my slack. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the canthal wire and I'm just going to tighten this down excellent now the other one I'm going to take up here and I am going to run it around the top post which is our hot and it doesn't matter which side of your coil you hook to which I mean one becomes your positive, one becomes your negative, and you know, everything else is 
pretty much taken care of on its own. So, oops. I'm gonna pull it and get my needle nose and pull just a little bit of slack out of that. Not much, but you don't want your coil really touching your posts. There we go. Just a little bit. Excellent. Oops. Right. Grab that. Hold on to it. Twist it down. Tighten it down, rather. Okay. Very good. Now, I need to adjust that coil a little bit. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut the, the excess off these pieces. Cut that extra canthal off. Okay. Now, when I tighten that up, I sort of messed up my coil a little bit. So I'm going to just come in here and um, space it out a little bit. Okay, that should be good. All right, <clears throat> now what I'm figuring, I don't need all this extra on either side here, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. But before I do that, I'm going to just make sure it's sitting, sitting level, you know. I'm just going to come up here and Do it just like that. Okay. And that coil is, is done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if you look down here, my wicks are a little long. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them about right there where the O-ring is for the bottom of the tank. Because I want them to touch the bottom, but I don't want them so long that they get down there with the o-ring and won't let the tank seal so all right that looks good and it's time to put our our tank on so I'll just show you how it, how it looks like that okay make sure that this is pulled away from that a little bit all right now, before I put my tank on, I, I generally like to add a little e-liquid to the O-rings just to help that um, tank slide on a little better. It helps the uh, you know helps you from breaking your tank, and it also um, you know keeps you from damaging your your O-rings. All right, so our tank's on. So, what we can go ahead and do now is put a little e-liquid on the coil itself. And we can put a little in the tank. I'm not going to put that much in there just in case I don't like the way that thing vapes with that coil I, I constructed but I'll give give the uh, cotton and echo wool a, a chance to soak up let's put this bad boy together and throw it on a mod and see how it does now the mod I'm using is a EFRO EPHRO EFRO or EPRO uh, EA clone. It's a clone of the uh, Electric Angel. And we'll see how this thing vapes and how it tastes. 
Now hopefully I got me a winner here. Okay, folks, what what happened? I uh, I finished that build. I uh, was about to show how badass the build was and uh, take a puff and blow some vapor your way. And guess what happened? <coughs> you guessed it. Absolutely nothing. Okay. And I was scratching my head because I knew I wasn't going. I didn't have no direct shorts. Um, I had checked everything prior to, uh, you know, building this thing. And I, I didn't, I couldn't find anything that was wrong with it. And then all of a sudden I started looking down here at the base. And now you can, you can see that that little center pin there is um, above the the Delrin insulator okay and this is this is the part that screws onto your your mod or whatever you're uh, using to vape with but this this center pin is free floating and on this particular clone it it's basically this pin up here at the at the top so when I was looking at it I noticed that this pin had went down into the uh, center I guess when it was manufactured or, or whatever and it it was actually sitting just uh, probably half a millimeter lower than the Delrin insulator so when you would screw it on of course you were getting your ground on on the threads but there was no way that was going to make a connection with the center post on your uh, e-cig because it was actually down below the uh, uh, Delrin insulator and and I could tell it was below because when I mean I've already fixed this one to where it's sticking out a little bit but I I, I rubbed my screwdriver there and I could f actually catch that that insulator right there so I knew this was was countersunk and uh, so what I what I had to do was I just came up here with my pliers and I put one side underneath here making sure I didn't damage my o-rings and the other one right here and all I did was squeeze it a little bit to push that pin back out to where it should be okay so if you get one of these and it doesn't fire make sure you look at that so now guess what I get to do that's right build another coil so let me uh let me do that i'm going to turn the the camera off while i do that and i'll come back and demonstrate how well it works all right guys i got the coil rebuilt i'm just letting the uh, uh, wick soak up a little bit of the e-juice this is cappuccino that's why it's sort of dark um, I don't know, I've been on a cappuccino espresso kick here lately, but, uh, anyway, uh, if anything, this video just goes to show that you should always check your, uh, your ohms, your resistance on your, on your coil before, you know, when you rebuild them prior to putting any e-juice in there, just so you're not being wasteful like I was, but, uh, you know, I, I checked it out and I thought everything was okay and it just goes to show once you put it together you could actually end up 
you know not be working properly so anyway I'm gonna try and fire this up and see what it does oh yeah there it goes okay well let me uh, put the cover on this thing and I am gonna take a vape and see how it does Oh man! <coughs> Whoo! That thing hit pretty doggone good now. <coughs> oh wow! That thing hits like a freight train like that. Man, might even have to adjust the airflow on it. whoa yeah that's that's working pretty doggone good um take one more <coughs> oh, wow my 12 milligrams might be a little too strong for this addy I might have to, it's giving me a real strong uh, throat hit, even with just that one uh, one coil in there. Alright, didn't cough quite as bad there. Um, in closing, uh, I'm going to say that because of that floating positive pin that I don't know I, I think it works good it hits hard I think if you had the right equipment and could and could uh, do a, a dual sub ohm coil on it it would it would probably rock pretty hard um, this uh, echo wool with the cotton uh, core uh, seems to be wicking great I mean I'll know after about a day's worth of use out of it or so I'll I'll keep track of it and see how I, I like it but I'm gonna say if I was the manufacturer of this the only way that I could see to the Achilles heel on this one's going to definitely be that floating positive pin because if somebody has a a um, a mod sort of like this EA mod that has the floating uh, pin itself, you know, in the 510 connection, and and you really crank, you know, because it's a telescoping mod. If you really crank it, you you run the possibility of countersinking the the floating hot pin on on this addy uh, if I was the manufacturer of this particular uh, Kraken clone what I would probably do is make the the bottom pin well actually the whole pin I would sort of do like they do on the KFUN 3.1s and I'd make it a long screw that actually screws would screw in up here at the top so you'd have a screw that would go through the insulator all the way up and screw into the top but unfortunately this it doesn't look like that's how this is uh, produced it looks like they're just using a, a floating pin so if you if if you end up purchasing one of these Addies, like I said, it works pretty good at least with a setup I've got. Uh, just be aware of that floating pin, and if you run into the situation where it won't fire, uh, that might be one something that you want to look at. You might want to just unscrew it and and take a look at that that. Uh, positive post and see if it's it's gone up and countersunk inside that that Delrin uh, insulator other than that guys man this this thing's a um, 
I, I really love the fact that they they came on with the came up with a, a screw on uh, cover for that. I mean, that's great. Man, it's it's man, it looks beautiful. It's a beautiful uh, Addy. So I got a couple marks on mine, but uh, it's it's beautiful. And if you just uh, make yourself aware of that one issue with the the floating pin you should be all right and um, you know that's about it I'm 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 pretty sure if I came up I, I could probably mod that Addy myself if I came up with a long enough stainless steel screw uh, and and basically it would it would be sort of like the uh, K Fun 3.1s. It would go in the bottom with a with a uh, insulator here, and then just have it come out the top with another insulator. Because that's how this is. It's got an insulator at the bottom, an insulator at the top, but the pin's floating. So if you used a threaded bolt, it would go. You could screw it into that top insulator, and then just run a, a small nut down on top of it and then you could hook up your wire and then just have another small nut there that's that's just an idea i mean i might if if this thing gives me too much problems because of that floating uh positive uh lead then that that might be something that i that i try to do to it uh but you know just keep that in mind and and uh, hope you enjoyed the video